Hi, thanks for joining me today. My name is Josh. I want to welcome you to another study session. We've been going through a few Christian disciplines, but we were looking at them through the lens of the season of Lent. And just as a quick reminder of what Lent is, it is an ancient church tradition that dates back to about 320, 325 AD. And for centuries, followers of Christ have entered into this season that is mirroring the 40 days that Jesus was in the wilderness being tempted by the devil. And those 40 days were mirroring what the Israelites experienced during the 40 years that they were wandering around in the wilderness after escaping Egypt. And so we as Christians are invited into kind of this somber season where we're invited to be reminded that from dust we came and from dust we shall return. It's a really hum humbling thing to be reminded that we rely on God for everything. We rely on God for the air we breathe. We rely on God for our finances. We rely on God for the food and the water that sustains us. Lent is the opportunity every year to willingly enter into a wilderness, to decrease in order to allow God to increase in our lives. I don't know about you, but over the course of a year, over the course of years, I will come to find that my center has become a bit off-center and I come to realize that things in my life have started to take precedence and priority over my relationship with God. And so Lent is that opportunity, that, that invitation to take stock and to analyze and to look at our lives in a really maybe difficult way and recognize and to um, realize that there are things that are taking us away from, from God and are distracting us from having a deep and intimate relationship with our Father in Heaven. I've been talking about prayer, I've been talking about meditation and stillness. Today I'm going to talk about an oldie but a goodie, one that a lot of us I'm sure are very familiar with, fasting. That's right fasting. That's one that I'm sure a lot of us have at least heard about. Maybe some of us have attempted and have fallen flat on our face because we aren't really sure how to go about this whole fasting thing in a way that is sustainable or even useful in a lot of ways. I have a friend who for years has fasted during Lent and he has given up Pepsi. He is a big, big fan of Pepsi. And he does go through the difficult act of removing Pepsi from his day-to-day -day, uh, day -day diet, <laughs> if you will. And he probably drinks way too much Pepsi to begin with, so it's a good act for him to, to abstain from it for at least a little bit. But let me tell you, those first few days that he is off Pepsi, I'm sure it's difficult for him, but man, it is really difficult for those who are around him. Let me tell you, if you think cutting out coffee is difficult, Pepsi for him was probably right, right at the top as well. The interesting about, thing about fasting though is that we can so often focus all of our attention on food and that becomes kind of our, our in, um, immediate thought is that it must be about the things that we get rid of as far as food goes. But in fact, fasting can really be, especially in today's age, it can be all of the things or any of the things that we feel are getting in the way of a more deep and intimate relationship with God. The things that we're kind of putting in the center of our lives, uh, whether we recognize it or not. Things like social media, things like comparison, things like food or uh, entertainment. 
things of that nature. I want to be mindful to say I don't think that those things in and of themselves are bad. I think that our, our response to them, the way that we idolize them, the way that they become idols in our lives, that is when the trouble begins. Lent is an opportunity for us to take a hard look at those things and to see if they are starting to take a kind of a dominant role in our lives in the way that we live out our lives. Lent is an opportunity for us to recenter and to reorient and to remember that God should be the center of all things and everything else should orbit around that or should come as an overflow of that relationship with God himself. Why, so why is fasting important? Let me give you three specific reasons that fasting is important. Fasting starves what is stopping us from experiencing God's presence. I think you and I can recognize that there are times where we will binge, whether that be Netflix, whether that be uh, food, whether that be social media. We go to these things to fill kind of an emptiness within our hearts, within our very souls. Lent is an opportunity and fasting in particular is an opportunity for us to really look at why do we go to those things to try to fill this emptiness that we feel? What is it that those things are, are supposedly trying to um, help us with or help us through? And I think what fasting does is it slows us down and it gives us an opportunity and a way to really recognize when we are going to those, um, to those outlets and almost doing it in a, in a mindless, habitual way without even recognizing it. The second reason why fasting is important is that it invites us to give up something that we love, to make room for something that we love even more. Like I said before, these things that we would fast from, they are not bad in and of themselves. But when they start to become idols, when they start to become things that distract us, from God when they start to become ways that make it difficult for us to love people as God would have us love them, then we need to take a, a long, hard look at those things. We need to recognize that everything should be centered on God and we should, we should then have all of these other things kind of come out of that reverence and love for God at the very center of our lives. So fasting is an opportunity for us to get rid of something that we love for a season so that we can be reminded of who we love for eternity. The last thing that fasting does is it is oftentimes a discipline that we can be participating in that actually leads us to breakthrough really interesting throughout scripture you'll find lots of instances where fasting precedes breakthrough. Moses actually fasts for 40 days before he is then given the Ten Commandments. Jesus as we know fasts for 40 days before he is able to withstand the temptations of the devil himself. Even Daniel he fasts for three weeks before he is given a vision by God. So the great thing about fasting is that it can also lead us to and into these very holy moments where we have been searching for, we have been striving for, we have been um, needing a breakthrough in our lives and we've been working so hard for it, but God is actually inviting us to not do more, but to actually do less. We should be reliant on God himself. And these other things, these worldly things, these temporal things, they will all be revealed to us by God if we would just slow down and we would listen and we would take the time to be with God and to hear what he would have to say to us. 
So here is one suggestion for you, one very basic suggestion for you when it comes to fasting. So often we jump in and we want to do fasting at kind of breakneck speed. We want to do it in the very kind of gr most grand way that we possibly can. And yet we're reminded by Jesus himself not to fast in order to bring attention to ourselves, but in order to ultimately come closer to God. We need to use these things like fasting, like meditation and stillness, like prayer, as a tool to remove the distractions in our lives, like I said, but ultimately it is in the pursuit of God himself. We don't want these things, these practices, these disciplines to themselves become the idol that we are centered on. That is what Christ himself, what Jesus was calling the Pharisees out on. These religious elite, they were starting to make idols of the very religious practices that were meant to draw people into a closer relationship with God but they were so focused on the practice that, that they kind of disregarded the God part. <laughs> These practices bring us into, or have the potential of bringing us into a very holy space. And that is what we should be pursuing, this space that we get to be in community with our Heavenly Father. So here's the suggestion for you. Instead of jumping in, all in, wanting to do you know, a 40 day fast, for example. Instead, I would encourage you to do a 24 hour fast. Whether that's food, whether that's social media, whether that's comparison, whether that's any number of other things that you fast from. And in those 24 hours, any time that you feel that temptation, whether that be the hunger pains, whether that be the need to pick up your smartphone in order to look at your news feed or to look at your social media feeds. Stop. Stop in that moment and pray to God. Make that a holy moment, not a moment where you are shamed or feel guilt, but it's a moment where you get to stop and instead of doing the thing, you get to enter into this holy space with God himself and you can take a deep, hard look at why it is that you are tempted to do that thing. And I, I would not be surprised if those moments become really memorable and really special. And I wouldn't be surprised if those 24 hours go a lot faster than you may have anticipated. Now for a really great resource of ways that you can fast or different fasting options, I would encourage you to check out a book called 40 Days of Decrease. I'll put the information on the screen here. 40 Days of Decrease. It's a wonderful devotion. It's a wonderful um, resource for you to realize that fasting can be really creative. There are so many things in our lives that are vying for it, our attention, that are um, pulling at us in all sorts of different ways. And, and really this resource, this 40 Days of Decrease book is an opportunity for us to look at all of those different aspects of our lives and really create maybe 40 different days of fasting and before you know it you have made it through this entire season of Lent fasting but in ways that are not just solely focused on food alone. Another suggestion for you is that once you finish that 24 hour fast perhaps you write down in a journal some of the things that you experienced. What were those holy moments that you recognized did you notice that your um, temptations became less as you went further into that, that fast? Or maybe like me, 
one initial time I had tried fasting, I tried to eat just what I could buy for $1.50, which essentially was just a whole bunch of beans and rice. <laughs> and man, I absolutely failed at this fast. I was eating a blueberry muffin before I even had a chance to think about it. But that also taught me something about fasting. It taught me that there was something that I needed to look at that um, I was relying too much on myself, too much on my own strength in order to provide for myself, as opposed to recognizing that I could have made it if I had really taken the opportunity to think about what it was that I was experiencing. So I hope that this time together is of encouragement to you. I hope that it provides you with some guidance and direction of how you might be able to um, participate in these different Christian disciplines, maybe even to participate in the season of Lent. Above all, I hope that it's something that has got you thinking and has kind of started the, the wheels going in your mind as far as what are ways that we can practically be actively participating in this Christian faith that we are a part of. And if you've kind of stumbled across this video and you're not necessarily a, a follower of Christ, maybe it gives you the opportunity or the inspiration to reach out to somebody and to just start asking questions. And I hope that you can find someone who would be willing to walk with you in the midst of that questioning and to, um, and to explore this really, really special relationship that we get to have with God. And so with that, thank you again for joining me today. I encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you can be notified anytime a new study session comes online. You, you can also be notified anytime we uh, publish a new video of any kind. Blessings to you. And I wish all the best for you. Take care.